Our partners at Decision Desk HQ just releasing their latest forecasting model on the balance of power in Congress. Let's bring in Scott Tranter, advisor for Decision Desk HQ. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. So let's do a little math uh, for our viewers right now. 36 Senate seats are up for grabs this year. 36, along with all 435 House seats. Uh, what are your yep. projections showing uh, when it comes to the control of both chambers? So right now we have basically a coin flip in the Senate with a slight edge to the Democrats. And we think it's a pretty, pretty sure bet the Republicans are going to take the House. Which has been forecasted for quite some time. So this just confirms what we've already been hearing. Uh, you also see a toss up with some specific races in Pennsylvania, Nevada and Georgia. Talk about that. Yeah, those are going to be the three closest ones right there. Pennsylvania, Mehmet Oz, the former reality or daytime television star versus John Fetterman, um, a real uh, lightning candidate who's actually had some health issues. In Nevada, we have Cortez Maestro um, against Adam Laxalt. Um, and Arizona, that'll be an interesting one. There's a lot of outside money going into that one. You know, former astronaut uh, Mark Kelly versus uh, Blake Masters, who's got a lot of Peter Thiel money behind him and a lot of MAGA money behind him. So it it, it, those are the three races to look at closely. Georgia, a few others. Florida, there might be some something in Ohio. The Senate is really going to be where a lot of the action is going to be this fall. That Peter Thiel, I haven't heard that name come out in the news in quite some time. Thanks for that throwback. Um, obviously, though, a big PayPal money, big Facebook money uh, behind him. Uh, so the focus of some of the districts that flipped blue in 2018, uh, but then receded somewhat in 2020. What is the trend now? The trend now is, and it's 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 in line with what normally happens, is the the party in power, so it's President Biden and the Democrats, usually gives up seats. Um, and so some of those seats that had gone Republican in 2020 um, are, are looking like they're going to, I'm sorry, some of those seats that have gone Democrat in 2020 are gonna, looking like they're going to go Republican this time. And they tend to be in the suburbs um, or exurbs. So think, you know, not Philadelphia, outside Philadelphia, or not in Detroit, outside Detroit, those types of areas. And, and that's where we're going to see a lot of the battleground um, races play out and really where the independent voters are going to be won or lost. Do you think, are you able to see any data that is showing that people are switching parties, that more Democrats are actually flipping to Republican, fed up with their own party, more Republicans are fed up and going to the Democratic Party? It's not so much flipping, it's new registrants. We're looking in states like Florida, we're looking at states like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. As registration grows, we see the Republican registration growing higher. But interesting fact here, while the Republican registration is growing higher, Democrat registration is growing higher but less, the fastest growing segment of, of party registration in the U.S. is nonpartisan. Oh my, well, but you know, it's interesting. I could talk to you about that for an hour. Because if you're nonpartisan, but you know you have more conservative values, are you still voting Republican? You just don't want to actually say it. You don't want to wear your, you fly your flag or wear your hat. Exactly, and there there is a lot of um, sociology PhDs studying that right now. Um, and part of it might be is you you might vote um, Republican consistently, but you might not like everything about the Republican Party, and so you don't want to associate with them. There's a lot of branding sociology behind it and psychology, and and it, it, it has really been a phenomenon since 2018, how the registration has shaked out, and we're going to see the effects in 2022, and I hate to say it, 2024, we're already thinking about. Yeah, well, yeah, it just seems like it's right around the corner, and yet it's still quite a ways away. One more question for you. Most voters, historically, not really paying as much attention, but these local races have really engaged people at a new level. Are we seeing different trends or are we expecting people to get more engaged after Labor Day? Um, we're expecting people to get more engaged after Labor Day, but the one stat we look at is the amount of money in politics. We just had an end of quarter um, uh, FEC, so that's where we track all the money raised at the federal level last Friday, and we're seeing record levels of fundraising, and that's on the backs of things like Roe versus Wade. We've got some charismatic candidates in Georgia. I see you got Herschel Walker up there. He's a, he's a prolific fundraiser. Um, th there's just a lot more money in politics this cycle, and that's that's been the trend for a while, and you know, you're not giving money to something that you're not enthusiastic about so that's that's really what we're tracking here just wait till after labor day when everyone starts paying attention we'll see how much that money translates to vote scott tranter thank you so much for for joining us thank you thank you for watching go to newsnationnow.com to find news nation on your television provider and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of news nation's fact-driven unbiased coverage